Here at the University of Tennessee, the number one weed that our team works on is annual bluegrass. In this video, we'll review herbicide mixtures for annual bluegrass control in Bermuda grass applied in late fall. So in any research trial, it's important that you include non-treated control plots. And that's what we're looking at here. This is a non-treated control plot. The brown that you see in this plot is dormant hybrid Bermuda grass. The cultivar in this instance is Tifway hybrid Bermuda grass. We have our, our target weed, which is the, the green grass that you can see present. That's Poa annua uh, with a heavy infestation of Poa annua at this site. We also have select winter annual broadleaf weeds that are in this non-treated check plot that we will see in other treated plots as we go through this series of options looking at herbicide mixtures for poa annual control in hybrid Bermuda grass and all of these mixtures would have been would have been applied on October 20th of 2020. So what we're looking at here is an application of freehand uh, again applied on October 20th. This is a granular herbicide it was applied at 200 pounds per acre. Uh, this is a treatment that has gained a lot of popularity uh, on golf courses, particularly uh, in treating uh, the area surrounding creeping bent grass greens because our potential for uh, lateral movement here is, is fairly low. Uh, we can see that this application has done a really nice job uh, controlling POA annua uh, at this site. And the way this works, we've done a lot of research on this concept over the past several years. Uh, freehand is a mixture of pendimethalin, the active ingredient in pendulum, and dimethetamid, the active ingredient in tower. And what we have learned through research is that the uh, dimethetamid is enough to control juvenile annual bluegrass seedlings when they uh, are newly emerged from the soil. And then our pendimethalin, obviously, as a pre-emergence product, uh, gives us protection uh, against those uh, seedlings that have not yet germinated to keep us clean as we go throughout the winter and into the spring. So what we're looking at here is essentially a, a liquid freehand concept. Uh, many turfgrass managers that have been interested in freehand uh, are limited by the fact that it's a granular formulated product and they have taken to combining uh, the two active ingredients, pendimethalin, the active ingredient in pendulum, and dimethetamin, the active ingredient in tower, uh, which are both sold as liquids when, at, when they're standalone, they've taken to making their own mix of, of putting those two liquid products together in the same tank. And that's what we've done here. So this is a plot that uh, was treated with tower, and 32 fluid ounces per acre, mixed with pendulum aquacap at 67 fluid ounces per acre. And again, this application would have been made on October 20th. And we can see here that our overall annual bluegrass control, uh, particularly when we compare it to the, the, the non-treated, uh, is fairly, fairly good. So this treatment is Sencor uh, at a rate of 10 ounces per acre, again, applied October 20th. There was a lot of interest in Sencor in the summer uh, of 2020. Uh, prim primarily focus on goosegrass control, and there is labeling of Sencor for Poa annua control as well. Here, uh, we've applied it again to young Poa annua seedlings uh, in October, and we can see um, the results of that treatment here. There are several misses when it comes to winter annual broadleaf weeds that we can note uh, in the foreground of this plot as well. So this treatment is another play on that Sencor concept. So here we've applied Sencor at six ounces per acre mixed with Ronstar Flow at 81 fluid ounces per acre. As you can imagine, this application caused pretty pronounced hybrid Bermuda, hybrid Bermuda grass injury in October, uh, upwards of 45%. From a POA control standpoint, now that we're in dormancy though, uh, overall POA annual control from this treatment has been high, but we have seen misses, uh, particularly in our winter annual broadleaf weeds uh, that are present in the center of this plot. So here, uh, we have a mixture of Sencor and Negate, uh, two different modes of action, Sencor, a photosystem 2 inhibitor, Negate, an ALS inhibitor. Uh, this was applied October 20th, 
and we can see here that our overall uh, annual bluegrass control is fairly good, a little bit better than what we've seen in some of our other treatments thus far for winter annual broadleaf weeds as well. I should note that this treatment uh, did impart temporary uh, injury to the hybrid Bermuda grass after application, which is not to be unexpected with the Sencor rate being 10 ounces uh, in what was applied to this plot. So this treatment is interesting. So this is manuscript uh, at the spot treatment rate of uh, 1.92 fluid ounces per thousand mixed with uh, Syngenta's proprietary adjuvant Adigor. This is a herbicide that's been used for uh, grass control. We've tested it for crabgrass control here at the University of Tennessee and it's done fairly well. We included it in our uh, POANU trials uh, based on some work that was generated in Australia uh, looking at efficacy of this active ingredient for POA control. And we did not have good success as you can see in the plot here, our overall POA control uh, really low compared to our non-treated check. I will share that in our 2019-2020 POA trials, we did see pronounced seed head suppression uh, with manuscript applications, but again, the, the control was uh, uh, unacceptable. So the next treatment that we're looking at is again, manuscript plus Adigor, and this is mixed with Pennant Magnum, uh, another mode of action differing from uh, the ACCA's inhibitor manuscript. The idea behind this treatment was to kind of play on uh, what we've seen in previous trial work with uh, freehand and tower. Uh, freehand, uh, which contains dimethetamide, a, a very long chain fatty acid inhibitor, same mode of action group here as pennant. The idea was to see if the pennant could help manuscript uh, controlling POA annual with an early post-emergence application made in October and as you can see from this plot that treatment was not as successful as we would have hoped for. So our next treatment here this is Regal Star 2. Um, again this is applied now at what would be considered a late timing. This would have been applied on October 20th so this is later than we would want to see Regal Star be applied given that it is uh, a mixture of two pre-emergence active ingredients, oxidiazon and prodiamine. Uh, and I think we can see that when we look at the, the POA present in these plots, I take uh, a lot of that to be a function of our application timing being uh, a little later than uh, optimal. So what we're looking at here, this is an application of Ronstar Flow, 81 fluid ounces per acre applied uh, in October, uh, October 20th to be specific. And as you can imagine, that application uh, resulted in hybrid Bermuda grass injury, fairly pronounced hybrid Bermuda grass injury um, after it was uh, applied to the turf in October. And now looking at it uh, in dormancy here, we can see our annual bluegrass control uh, and some misses on winter annual broadleaf weeds uh, as well. So next treatment is a mixture of Ronstar and Spectacle Flow. Ronstar applied at 81 fluid ounces and Spectacle at 6 fluid ounces uh, with the application made October 20th again. Now we've got uh, two different mode of action groups there uh, to help us on POA annua and winter annual broadleaf weeds. As you can expect with a, a or application of Ronstar at 81 fluid ounces to green turf, uh, we did see injury after application, but now that we're uh, fully into uh, late winter slash early spring, uh, our overall POA control with this treatment uh, is fairly decent uh, compared to what we saw in the non-treated check. So this is a treatment that's gained a lot of popularity amongst golf course superintendents in Tennessee. Uh, this is being marketed as the Bear Pre-3 program. This is a mixture of Tribute Total, uh, Princep, and Spectacle Flow. So we have three different mode of action groups. This was applied in this test on October 20th. And as we can see here, our POA annual control is excellent, 100% uh, uh, in all replications. We've got a little bit of uh, broadleaf weeds on the, the left, and left side of this plot, but uh, from a POA standpoint, it's hard to argue with this one. So this is another um, 
kind of approach to the the mixture concept this is something that we've talked about within ut extension is zone defenses where we're taking herbicides of different mode of action groups and putting them together to try to achieve a goal of having poa free turf what we're looking at here is negate uh, mixed with barricade and princip applied in uh, october october 20th to be specific uh, and the application here has resulted in uh, really good poa control as well as uh, really good winter annual broadleaf weed control. What we're looking at here, uh, this is Coastal. This is a newer herbicide uh, from SIPCAM. Uh, three active ingredients in this herbicide. Uh, Coastal contains amazequin, uh, simazine, and prodimine. So we have herbicides from three mode of action groups in one product. Uh, here, we're looking at sequential applications, uh, an application made October 20th at 32 fluid ounces per acre, and then another made in January at that same 32 fluid ounce rate, and our overall POA annual control here is excellent. So this is a treatment that we've tested for several years. Uh, this is a mixture of Katana at 2.5 ounces mixed with Curb uh, at 2.5 pints. And our uh, POA annual control here is excellent. Our winter annual uh, control from a broadleaf weed perspective is also excellent. So here we're building on that katana curb concept, uh, albeit at a, a slightly lower rate of curb. Now we've added Princep into the tank as a third mode of action, and we can see the results. The results here are excellent. And this is a, a, a really pronounced theme in this whole experiment is that mixtures of multiple modes of action applied in October are really are, are a recipe for success when trying to control uh, poa annua in hybrid Bermuda grass. We consistently see uh, that to be uh, an optimal concept. We've called it uh, a zone defense concept to play on a little bit of uh, football jargon, if you will. Uh, but over and again in our trial work, this has become uh, our go-to recommendation for uh, control and POA annua. We know that applications in this late October window uh, position that zone defense mixture in a way where uh, we know we've had emergence occur, we've had a sizable percentage of our yearly emergence total uh, already happen, and the plants are still at a uh, juvenile growth stage, so they're really uh, pretty easy to uh, eradicate with mixtures of pre and post chemistry. So this is another uh, zone defense concept. Here, uh, we're taking uh, Katana and Curb as a base, and now we've added Tower uh, to that mixture as well. Again, so we've got three modes of action in our tank uh, in order to keep uh, Poa Annua at bay, and the results here speak for themselves. Our overall control uh, is excellent. Another mixture uh, of three modes of action. Here we have Katana uh, at two and a half ounces mixed with Princep and Spectacle Flow uh, at six fluid ounces. Again, three modes of action in the tank applied at that late October window and the results here uh, are what uh, we would all hope for. Uh, excellent POA annual control. So here we have another mixture, uh, Katana at two and a half ounces mixed with Tower in spectacle flow uh, and very similar results. We can put three modes of action together and get uh, excellent POA annual control. And I hope one of the takeaways that you can see here are there are a lot of different mixture combinations one can come up with. We can take the diversity of uh, herbicidal modes of action available for use in turf grass and as long as they have activity on POA annua, then as many of those as we can combine uh, in one application is gonna increase our chances uh, for not only overall high efficacy in controlling populations, but also resistance management and not selecting for individuals that will eventually survive applications over time. So this is another mixture uh, put together uh, from Syngenta with three of their uh, active ingredients. So this is Barricade uh, at 32 fluid ounces, mixed with Princep at 32 fluid ounces, and then Monument uh, at 0 0.35 ounces. Uh, again, applied October 20th, and similar to what we saw with some of our Katana-based mixtures, as well as our Bear Pre-3 program, that 
uh, combining multiple modes of action here has really uh, given us a high level of Poe annular control. So this is another uh, mixture uh, from Syngenta. Here we've increased our Princep rate compared to what we saw in the previous plot. And the results are very similar here that uh, overall Poe annual control uh, is really excellent with this combination of barricade, Princep, and monument. This is our final uh, zone defense or mixture concept applied in October. Uh, this is Barricade, Prince Up, and Monument, but here we've increased our monument rate compared to what we saw uh, in the previous two plots. And the results here are, from a POA control standpoint are uh, excellent. So in terms of take-home messages from all these treatments, uh, what we've seen is that here in Tennessee, applications made in late October, everything we saw in this, in this test was applied October 20th. That's a real optimal time to control uh, Poa annua in hybrid Bermuda grass, particularly at, at fairway height, which is what this uh, trial was structured to be, is to simulate a golf course fairway. We know that that October timing works really well, and we know that zone defense mixtures work really well. So if we look at our different herbicide mode of action groups, and you can find those out by looking at your labels, mode of action groups are numbered. If we can combine herbicides of different mode of action groups, so we're putting together uh, groups of different numbers uh, in order to um, make an effective treatment that's gonna give us the best chances of overall success. And we know that there are a lot of different ways we can do that. You've seen multiple different plays on this mixture concept idea in this video, and we can continue to diversify uh, what we're doing uh, against this weed that we know has the ability to evolve resistance uh, to any one treatment uh, applied over time. We want to continue our diversity when it comes to POA annual control in Bermuda grass. I'd like to take a moment to thank uh, multiple groups that, that have supported the research that you've seen in this video and, and other videos on POA annual control from the University of Tennessee. Uh, with all of our trial work, everything you've seen this, in this video has been replicated at other locations across the state. And I'd like to thank all of the uh, superintendents within the Tennessee Golf Course Superintendents Association that have supported that work and been uh, host sites for trials. We really couldn't do it uh, without, without you. And, and having multiple locations really gives us more confidence and more power to the results. So thank you to uh, those that have helped with auxiliary sites. I'd like to thank the East Tennessee Research and Education Center, kind of the home to UT Turfgrass Research for providing us a, a facility and opportunity to, to do the, the bulk of our work uh, that we do in the, in the Turfgrass Weed Science Program. I'd also like to thank the Tennessee uh, Turfgrass Association as well as the uh, Tennessee Valley Sports Turf Managers Association for their support, not only of this research, but all the research we do within the UT Turfgrass program. And then lastly, uh, I'd like to thank uh, numerous industry supporters, particularly those that have uh, submitted treatments for inclusion in these programs, uh, having uh, your support to do this work and provide um, Turfgrass managers solutions to this problem of uh, Poa annual control in turf is is much appreciated. So thank you for that.